Good morning and welcome to the Core Connection. I'm Mara Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is being the light. There's so much going on in the world that we can find ourselves um, hopeless, helpless, sad, pained, uh, suffering about. And the thing is that when we allow ourselves to fall into that darkness, our light is dimmed and thus is dimmed the light of the world. And so we have the ability and in my world, the responsibility to be brightening the light, nourishing the light. And um, that's, that's what we're talking about today, even though it can be a challenge. So uh, before we get started, let's take a minute or two to get present. Let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And this time, imagine brilliant, bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, all your molecules, your electrons, creating a brilliant beam of light and energy from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue, and now let's Press our palms together, vigorously rub your hands together to feel the friction, the temperature, the pressure, the motion, the tickling and tingling when you stop and allow all those sensations to bring you present right here, right now into this remarkable physical form that enables you to experience life. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, Rosalind. Good morning to everybody else who's joining us. So good to have you here with us this morning. So we're talking about being the light. Um, so many of us are, are sensitives and it's very easy to get sucked into the darkness around all the awfulness that we can see around us in the world. And we've talked about this before, but it's becoming clearer and clearer and clearer to me how critically important it is to be curating our energy, to be being the light, to be the light. Because as we succumb to the darkness, the sadness, the, the horrors of the world, as we allow ourselves to indulge in despair what's happening is that the darkness is winning and while i'm not an advocate of fighting i am an advocate of strengthening and now more than ever, it's important that we strengthen the light. And uh, this is this is this is the way that darkness propagates is by allowing uh, by us allowing ourselves to fall into a despair around the way things are. It's challenging to maintain the light in the face of the deep 
um, challenges that the world presents. But curating our energy, I've talked about this a lot, and it's something that we do on all different levels. Curating our energy is one thing, one thing, the thing we can do that's going to make a difference in the field, the, the greater field of collective consciousness. And it's not, it's not um, helpful to be suffering with others. It's, I'm not talking about not being compassionate or not, or denying what's so, but you, you've all heard the saying, misery loves company. And that's, that's true. It's kind of like the crabs in a bucket caught trying to pull us back down into the bucket. And that's how we propagate darkness. We propagate darkness, not just by sourcing the darkness within us, but by not being the light. And, and one way that we do source the darkness within us is by making that the focal point of our attentions. Somehow we have this idea that we need to be immersed in all that darkness, all the horror, all the, all the awfulness in order to be responsible citizens. That's a whole bunch of BS. Because what is our upset going to do? We can, we can be aware of something and take action about it. You know, we can we can be aware of something and um, if be moved to do something productive. But how much of the worry and upset that we indulge in is in any way productive? Most of it is actually overtly destructive, destructive to ourselves. I. I know so many people who feel incapacitated in the face of the challenges of our current world. And I, I can get it. I get why. The thing is, then what we've done is we've neutered ourselves. We've, we've cut ourselves off from the source of our strength, which is the light, the light that we are, the light that we can connect to that's greater than all of us. And we help to, when we allow our light to be dimmed, we, we are essentially contributing to the darkness. Right. I I um I really don't like the war metaphors and what keeps coming up is like being a sacred sacred warrior. And I guess maybe like there can be a warrior spirit perhaps without war. Um in terms, I, I just wish I had another word. If you have another word, let's help help me out here because uh, we're so entrenched in this notion of war and it's it's kind of craziness. but there there uh, there is this balance between light and dark, right? Like that we we imagine that the sun sets. Somebody gave me this great example the other day talking about different levels of truth. And we can we can be here and it can be nighttime and we can say in all truth and honesty, the sun has set. But the fact is the sun is always shining. We're just not always seeing it, right? <clears throat> so somebody else can say the sun is shining. And that also is true at the same time that the sun has set. 
It's just not true in the same place. And so there's light and there's dark. And I guess we don't, it can't all be light because light wouldn't exist without dark. And there's always this balance. Is it more light? Is it more dark? And if we're if we're to lift ourselves from this paradigm of suffering and strife, we need to be able to elevate our frequency to to get to like put input energy, input energy, input energy until we pop up to the next next uh quantum level and the way that we get to do that is even in the face of what looks like darkness we find light and we propagate that because it's coexisting you know what what we hear about which is part of the conditioning that keeps us in this low frequency in, in a strategic way, perhaps. Uh, what we keep hearing about is all the awfulness, right? We don't hear about all the goodness that is also emerging. And there's lots. There's lots. That's one of the reasons I started Sustainability Now was to be looking at what kinds of positive and hopeful things are happening that make a difference, you know, like progressing toward the world that we really dream of. We do dream our world into being. And when, when we allow ourselves to succumb to the awfulness we're we are abandoning the light even if only temporarily and we we can grant ourselves those moments but to wallow in that to to it's like getting caught under the wheel it's like you've seen hamsters run on a wheel and when they stop <laughs> it just keeps rolling you know and and um, or or people that are on a treadmill, right? And the treadmill gets away from them. That's kind of what happens and we get churned up in it. If if we don't maintain maintain ourselves. So part of this comes to self-care because it's not always easy to find the reserves to bring that light. It does take some energy and it can take a concerted and deliberate effort to bring that light. And so we need to care for ourselves. This is a tough time of year for a lot of people. We're going into the darkness of the winter. Actually, we're coming out of it finally. Um, little by little, but uh, I, I've seen so many people, so many of my clients just getting sick. And part of it is that we're around more people. We've been isolated a lot. And in the holidays, we're around more people. And so maybe our, our, exposure to other people is making us more vulnerable maybe we have pushed ourselves beyond our our place of wellness you know, there's it's a season where people are doing 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 and and that can also take its toll where we overdo 
where we push ourselves beyond our our limits, so to speak, and overstress ourselves. So this is a time where really um, in nature, kind of it's a it's sort of a time of hibernation for lots of creatures and for internally focusing and if we're if we're feeling unwell if we're feeling depleted it makes the work of bringing the light more challenging so it's really important to curate our own energy this notion of self-indulgence, if it's self-care, I mean, resting is not self-indulgent. Resting when we need rest is curating our energy in an appropriate way. Resting when we need rest, caring for ourselves, Maybe, maybe not exposing yourself to all the horrors on a regular basis. I know so many people who are addicted to the news and yet they hear the news or see the news and they're devastated. And the thing is, it's not that it's responsible to be staying on top of that because that news is curated in a way that it is very, very stilted. It's very stilted toward sensationalist, heart-wrenching topics that are going to manipulate our emotions on a whole bunch of different levels. If you can stay informed, about see that's the thing too we think it's being st staying informed on a certain level perhaps but realize that it's not it's not being informed about what's happening in the world it's being informed about what people are being fed about what's happening in the world it is it may, may be what's happening in the world but it's not in any way a complete picture it's not a complete picture it's a very stilted picture and so if if we're watching the news it's really important to recognize that this is a very partial picture and it is shaping our perception. And I can't necessarily believe that the way that it's shaping our perception of the world and our, our internal experience, our emotional experience, our energetic experience, it's, it's shaping that too. It's creating a programming around that. So if you're going to watch the news, watch the news in a way that's very circumspect. You know, notice what what are the stories that are being told here? What is the impact of those stories? Don't just be a sponge for it. Don't just buy into this is what's happening. This is the totality of what's important that's happening in the world because it is curated. There are all kinds of stories that aren't showing up in the news that are really important in the world in terms of what's happening with, with energy development and, and new uh, you know environmental things. We don't see that a whole lot on the news. There's all kinds of stuff like that happening too. Light and dark, right? So... when we're when we're looking to be informed it's important to pay attention to the source and and what exactly is being shown like step back from it 
look at it from a meta level to say, hey, what's 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 the underlying theme here? What's going on that that these are the stories that were being shown? We were shown stories about war and murder and and um, mass shootings and and people missing and you know for the most part um just negative 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 things that will respond to with horror or depression or defeat or helplessness or hopelessness and you can see as you as you start recognizing that i mean if you're looking at it with curiosity you can see as you're watching this stuff or listening to this stuff that certain stories are being told above all else like that's what's happening like that is the truth of what's happening in the world where it is just the tiniest tiniest fraction and it's typically quite skewed to pull on our heartstrings in a way that is super disempowering. I'm not saying ignore stuff. I'm saying be alert, be awake. Pay attention to what you're being fed because we're being fed. We're being fed. And it's not that that's the only meal available it's like being fed fats and sugars and salts and all the all the chemicals that so many of us consume right because that's the kind of um the foods that are easy right So, so pay attention, pay attention and, and choose and choose in a way, like if you have, if you can be watching that stuff and not have it consume you, great then you can be aware, you can learn, you know, what's happening in certain areas, recognize that ain't the whole thing. It's not even a small fraction of what's going on. It's just what we're being fed. It's just where our attention is being deliberately directed. And your attention is precious. Your energy is precious. And it's really important to the world now more than ever. So honor that, honor that energy, honor it, respect it, cultivate it, nurture it, nurture the light that you are. And I know if I heard somebody having this conversation a long time ago, I would have poo-pooed it as sort of airy-fairy BS. But it isn't. This is all about energy. We are energy. Everything is energy. And being awake to that and curating that is is the biggest thing that we can do to make a difference. At least that's what I believe. You don't have to believe that. You can check it out, see how that resonates for you. But if we're looking to create a new world, we can't be steeping ourselves in in the darkness of the world that is dying, the world that is dead or passing away, the past, we get to create something new. 
So Rosalind says, being a conduit, resonance with higher frequency, ability to absorb and dissipate what is not me. Yes, yes, yes. And discovering what is me. What is me? We are the light. And we get to moderate that light and modulate that light. And what happens is we give it away to the darkness. We let it get dampened. We let it get dulled and dimmed. And we often deliberately seek out the things that are going to dull and dim that light. So I invite us all to be aware be aware the light is the one thing is is the, it's the foundational thing that we bring to the world and we can brighten it and we can dim it so look for the things that brighten your light that light you up so Lisa, hi, Lisa. Lisa says, I'm always late. Happy holiday, Mira. May the new year be full of new blessings for us all, Lisa. Thank you so much for that. And um, you got here just in time to say that's it for today. <laughs> um, I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. I go live here each weekday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel and my Facebook page. Mira Rubin, and I think uh, Mira Rubin Rise, maybe, or or um, Core Connection. I don't even know. I'm learning. Anyway, um, always, always, it's a tremendous privilege to have the opportunity to be with you and and to share our thoughts, our perceptions, our expansions, our growth together. So until next time, so much love to you. <laughs>